that would be at least some type of some type of breakdown right like there's not there's not really anything it's just who do you think won right <laughs> right i think it's a 28 no i think it's a 29 yeah. <laughs> but what does that mean <laughs> yeah. like, and then yeah. how do you feel about open scoring like announcing i like i like the idea of um tell them what the judges are up to in between you should rounds. know what you have every round you should know going into the round who's winning and then I would like to see the implementation of uh, the yellow card for stalling, right? Yeah. And then if you get dinged with that yellow card, you know, three times you get a red card, you lose a percentage of your person that goes to your opponent. Ooh, losing money. That's even Cause better. Because I was that. thinking losing points, but losing money is even more they used effective. to do that. Uh, yeah, it's more, it'll go influence That's a bigger more. incentive, yeah. Uh, they used to do that in Pride back in the day, and I thought that was a great, great way to do that. Yeah, they had the open scoring in Pancrase on uh, one of Adam Antolin's fights, and I thought mm. that worked out really well for him because his corner was able to tell him, like, mm. this is where you're at. And so next round started, and he went in charging, knowing that, like, oh, uh, <laughs> I didn't get this your is attention. Part, this is part of why I think it's not, why why you don't have that type of open scoring. And there's no real, there's no real push from promoters or the commissions themselves to make any changes. And that's because the promoters don't want it to be – more clearly fair? understandable no they want it to be arbitrary because they want people to lose that shouldn't lose sometimes it keeps the, the power you think in their it makes favor it easy for them to throw a fight based on the, popularity the more a fighter wins the more notoriety he is the more power he has the more leverage he has so if they can they can mix it up and, and knock guys off every once in a while on a on mistake that, that 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 benefits them right so they're just throwing a fight by having a biased judge basically they don't, they just don't, they don't care anything about fairness. They care about control. Yeah. And I, when you, I say that, I mean the UFC, everybody else kind of has to do what they do because they say they wrote the rule book. It seems like other promotions come up with their own ways of, I mean, like Pancrase has the open scoring and um, one has Well, the, I mean, their scoring is a little bit different, but I mean, the, 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 the business practices. One has, the um, year-round weigh-ins so there's no weight cutting and then they do like ct scans and all this like their medicals are way more stringent than mm. i feel like anybody else's medicals because they do like ct scans and all this stuff and like hydration tests and things to like make mm. sure you're not cutting weight mm. so their weight classes are different too because of that i guess yeah everybody's kind of everybody's kind of fighting one up yeah yeah. So when do you think the, um, that like businesses are going to reopen or we're going to, people are going to be able to start booking fights again? Oh, I don't know. Um, you know, they're trying to, they're trying to make us think it's, you know, Oh, it may first, we're going to be back to normal, but I don't think so. Doesn't really Especially, seem, yeah. A lot of stuff, what's going on. Um, we may be locked down the whole summer, like August 1st, we may not, if we're lucky, August 1st. I feel like it might come in stages. Like they might let some businesses open before others. Right now, I feel like it's going to get worse before it gets better. Like, as I don't know what they're doing in Santa Clara, but in San Francisco, it's gotten more stringent. Like they just started mm -hmm. uh, ticketing people for violating the shelter in place order. They closed the playgrounds, the picnic grounds, the mm. tennis courts and golf courts because people just weren't, you know. They, and now they arrested they, a guy who was paddleboarding down in yeah. like L.A. Paddleboarding. I mean, I don't think you get arrested for paddleboarding solo in San Francisco because they let you exercise by yourself. Mm. But they uh, they're going to start ticketing people that are like playing basketball where you share a ball with people outside of your family mm. stuff like that yeah my uh my parents went golfing they're back in indiana and uh the did whole, they stay six feet apart <laughs> they take, there's no flags there's no flag well they live in the same house so they okay so they're okay with each other yeah so yeah they, they don't go around there's you know everybody spaced out anyways in the golf course but the the all the pins are been removed and then the holes are like filled in because what? I don't want anybody they touching. Want... Oh, wow. Reaching and... in there. and yeah. You know what's crazy, though? I read, like, a, a really in-depth piece by 
somebody who is in the food industry and they're as like as far as they could tell there have been no documented instances of smear transmission Hmm. so it's a you know it's a respiratory illness and it's those airborne droplets that are what really they can travel much further than six feet and they can Hmm. live in the air for originally they had said two to three hours now they're saying eight hours so um everything that people are uh, saying about you have to wipe down your packages when they come to your door and you have to wear gloves i mean that's great and all but really they as far as they've studied it yeah that's what they're saying is they don't want you to get the touch like touch your mucous membranes touch your like nose mouth and Mm. eyes or whatever and get it in there but as far as they have studied like there have been no confirmed cases of people actually getting it like that like Mm. it's mostly breathing and they also said that it can be transmitted um through just talking and breathing, not just, you don't have to be coughing. <laughs> oh, right. Excuse me. I, uh, I posted a, a thing on uh, Twitter where it was a guy who was breathing and coughing or whatever, and they could show the air flows. That oh, was, God. yeah, that frightening the perspective. Yeah. How much, <laughs> like it gets out from him because they showed a mask and then one without mask. It was pretty crazy. Wow. But yeah, I, I had a, uh, I got put on a, a long, uh, text whatever thing with a bunch of people group chat and one of my buddies from uh wrestling at purdue i i haven't heard from him in a while he was talking about how he he got coronavirus in the fall he got uh tested and diagnosed with it and everything and wow. he was a little bit sick for a couple of days and then he had pneumonia for like three days but he quarantined himself in his room for 14 days and uh no one else in his household got it and he's back to hunting bear. Nice. Does he? I'm afraid to ask. I was going to say, does he have permanent lung damage? No, I shouldn't <laughs> be that morbid. Um, but yeah, it's cool. It's always cool to hear, like, you know, there was somebody who was like a Holocaust survivor and a Spanish flu survivor. And then they, he <laughs> beat coronavirus at like 101 years old or God something. God really wants this person like, dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's God like, really nope. keeps trying to kill this person. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i like hearing those stories how's homeschooling go going though because i feel like that's another thing that people are really having trouble like it's one thing to be like okay now you got to work from home but then it's also like oh now you got to work from home and you have your kids 24 hours a day <laughs> yeah well i mean i'm with my kids a lot anyway so it's not too unnormal for me but the uh the so far the schooling is okay I haven't got the packet stuff for the youngest one yet. So I've been like making up. So he has to write something on his own and he has to do the math problems I come up with. And then the older son, the older boy has uh, packets that I can, I've, you know, printed and downloaded from the school. He's been doing those. So we have, that has been pretty easy so far because it's mostly stuff they already know, but we may get into things they don't, uh, don't know as much. We'll see how that works out. I'm trying to teach them new stuff. They're doing good with PE though. They're really Obviously, good uh, students yeah. with wrestling. I said they yell a little bit. I had to, I had to, <laughs> be, I had to be clear day that day. when we're in the gym and it's, and it's uh, training time that I'm coach, I'm not dad. <laughs> oh yeah, you bring them to pro team sometimes and they like sit in the corner with their snacks and their tablets. They're, yeah, they're yeah. awesome. It's cool. Yeah, well, I mean, they, I've been taking them to the gym with me for a long time because I didn't, I didn't want them to sit at home and, oh yeah, they're not phased by the gym at all. Like that's like their mm-hmm. second living room. Like they're just mm-hmm. totally just like, oh, there's 300 pound guys slamming each other into the walls and like throwing each other. Like they're like, whatever, yeah. I'm playing it's, my game here. Yeah. <laughs> Can you open the snack for me? Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, like I, when I I was in Vegas, uh, when I lived in Vegas, I, I was taking them both to to the gym with me, and I was training for the title fight. 2016 and you know like it would be in between rounds i'd have to like stop and change a diaper or or take one to the bathroom and then run back and finish the round like yeah yeah. they're total gym babies they're mat rats (laughs) that's awesome so what else we got other Any other questions for you? Anything else you want to bring up or talk well, I about? Have a, um, I have my I have a new book coming out. Ooh, it's called. What's the this one cut. about? It's called the Weight Cut Bible. Nice. And 
uh, how to w- cut me, weight without killing uh, yourself. <laughs> So the Wake Up Bible, how an MMA fighter loses 30 pounds in eight weeks. How do you do that? You have to buy the book and read. <laughs> but you, uh, yeah, no, I list what I do with all of my uh, meal prep, meal plan stuff. Uh, what I do a couple weeks before the fight when I start reducing calories and my protein intake, when I um, uh, fight week, when I, you know, cut certain things out and I, I started dropping the weight down even more. And uh, what I do after weigh-ins, what I eat all the way up until fight time, just kind of break. How do you keep story. your energy up to train? Because AKA is a really hard sparring pro team, and it seems like you have to keep like your muscle up and your energy up to be able to keep that level of training. But then at the same time, you're trying to keep your calories down because you're trying to keep your weight down. So how do you balance that? And you've been doing this for a really long time because you wrestled before you did MMA. So you've probably been cutting weight since you were like a teenager, right? 